Hello, and welcome to Crew Call, the Below the Line podcast by, for, and about the crew. Today's guest is an on-set data integration lead. That's quite a mouthful. Welcome, Vicki Chan. So why don't you explain to us first, to our listeners, what an on-set data integration lead is? Well, um, in summary, I am basically the person that connects sets to the computer world. So I am one of the people that will gather the data needed by the 300 artists, computer, you know, artists that will do all of the effects. So, you know, whatever they need, I'll get while we're on set. So lighting reference, survey, uh, textures, reference photos, um, anything really that I can get on set, I'll get. Wow. So that, that could be like just a ton of different things. Yes. <laughs> Cause it's pretty much, it's, you know, um, I kind of overseeing that, all the data that each department, either animators or, or lighting or um, integration, I don't know, compositors, all the different departments on the VFX side, okay. you know, need to get the information and the data. So I'm pretty much the person to do it. Oh, now, how did you get into this particular field? Funny story. I, it was just random, right place at the right time. I was uh, working on my first ever movie, uh, which was uh, David Fincher's Benjamin Button. Oh, okay. And I was a uh, data capture assistant. So I was just helping hmm. the guy, who, you know, record it. And because it was one of the first digital systems uh, where we were straight from the camera to uh, a recording device. Oh. And so I was like his assistant, the guy that, that you know, did all the recording. Oh, wow. And then... Uh, Digital Domain, which is the company that I work for right now, uh, were there doing the effects for the movie. And so I met one of the guys and they're like, hey, do you want to work for DD afterwards? And I'm like, sure, why not? I did not know anything about visual effects. Uh, nothing. Wow. You know, they just saw me. They're like, oh, you work hard. You know, we need people like you, you know, come on and join our team. So I was like, sure. That is great. Now, how did you actually, to even get that, that first job as the assistant, how, how did you even break into the business? What was your, fir- like, what department were you in? What was your first job? How did you get in to begin with? Right after I graduated uh, film school in Savannah, I came to LA and I started working at a commercial production company as a PA, oh. like $50 a a day or something like that or a week. I don't even remember. It was pretty low. Yikes. And then, um, that production company after, you know, working in the office, they, they sent me out on set as a set PA, you know, and then I started getting experience on set. And then after that, like, you know, they, they send you out and they're like, okay, you know, now it's your turn to just choose your own, uh, you know, like make connections and, and get your own job. And so that ran out really fast. (laughs) And so, I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I need a work visa. So okay. I needed a company to hire me and sponsor me. Okay. So I uh, started working at a camera house, uh, and they, you know, they agreed to sponsor me, and that's pretty much how I got into it. Because uh, the camera house that I was working at rented the cameras that Fincher used on that movie. So now tell us a little bit about that immigration process for someone who wants to work in the U.S. How difficult was that for you? It's pretty difficult. Uh, I I probably have spent about $30,000 on lawyer fees and visa fees, which is pretty ridiculous. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm fortunate that my parents can help me out, but it, it, you know, that's why there's so many illegals here. Uh, that's why it's so hard for people to actually get jobs because it it is expensive. And when the first company that, you know, sponsored me, I had to pay for the visa. Like they, they said that they would sponsor me, but I had to cover the cost. Okay. So, you know, that it, it's, it's good because they gave me a job, but you know, you, I still have to cover that, which, was pretty pretty high compared to what what I was getting paid, you know, since it's my first job. Yeah. But um, once you start getting connections, you know, or whatever, it, it depends on the company too. The, the bigger the company, the easier it is for them to pay for your visa. 
What inspired you to come to America rather than work in your home country? Oh, because there's no TV in, <laughs> in El Salvador. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, if I, if I want to work in the industry, it is, it, I definitely can't. You know, there's not much work opportunity back home. So, Tell us now about your job, like from the moment you, you get to work to the end. Technically, I have two different jobs. When I'm on set, I do one job. And when I'm in the front of the computer, I do another job. Um, I can't be on set all year round, uh, obviously, because we're not, we don't shoot all year round. <laughs> so when productions come in uh, and we have to go on set, they start shooting, then they send me out wherever the location is. Um, typical day, I, you, know, you start the day, get all your equipment, um, get all your cameras ready, your survey station, and you know, wait for the first shot. Typically, Per shot, I have to do uh, an HDRI, which is a high dynamic range image. Mm -hmm. What that does, it it tells the lighters how the scene was lit so that if there is a PG element or any effect being put in that scene, they can light the CG element exactly the same way that the DP lit the stage or the, you know, the the scene. Continuity. Exactly. So, you know, so that the, the CG element looks like it belongs in that stage or in that scene. Then for every location or every setup, I have to do a survey, which is pretty much taking measurements and uh, creating this 3D model, you know, a very rough model, but with specific and accurate measurements so that the modelers or that, uh, you know, the trackers know how to track the camera and we know exactly how big the stage is or the the environment is so that, you know, when we do the CG elements, everything is to scale. Okay. And what are we, I I also do some reference photos so that, you know, people know exactly how the camera was set up, you know, just uh, different, um, just reference photos, you know, just, just to see where the camera was in comparison to the set and where the lights are all placed, you know, just get, because all the artists are not there, obviously. So I am their eyes. So whatever I can give them, you know, will help them. And what else? I also have to do uh, texture photography, uh, which entails a, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I can do textures of, let's say we're shooting a building and we have to make the building bigger or we have to extend it or they only built half of the building and we have to make the other half of the building CG, we have to match to that building. Uh So I have to shoot textures and, um, you know, shoot as much reference photography of that building so that when they build the second half of that building, it matches, you know, you know, let's say there's bricks and all that stuff. I have to shoot the bricks so they can copy pretty much and, and, and mimic those bricks onto the fake building. Okay. There's also other types of textures, which is, um, you know, like in a photo booth where I take uh, photos with polarized and unpolarized light so that you can see the highlights and, uh, and the non-specular uh, light on, let's say, characters or costumes. So if we're doing CG characters, Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, doing like a unbelievable stunt that no human can do. Yeah. Um, they can recreate this character in 3D and then uh, map these textures onto this uh, model and so that it looks just like the actor did on set. Oh, okay. Lots of stuff, Vicky. Yeah. How long does it take you to <laughs> so do this? <laughs> <laughs> as long as the movie is going, you know, like uh, all these textures of artists or, or, or of, of actors and, and, and extras and all that stuff, obviously you can do when, when you're not shooting because, you know, you have to, you have to be shooting. You can't, you know, take the, you know, obviously the actor's acting, you can't take them out. Right. So it's, it's a lot of coordinating, you know, you, you, the HDRIs, obviously you have to do after every take because, or every lighting setup, because the lighting setup changes. So yeah. you have to record how the light changes every single setup. And then, uh, you know, reference photos, you have to take every time they move the camera or they move a setup, you have to take more photos. So it's a, it's a lot of photography and a lot of reference, you know, reference stuff um, so that, so that everybody, all the artists and the computer afterwards know what they did, pretty much. And how long of a day do you usually have? Does it vary? Uh, 
Um, yeah, it, it pretty much, you know, we get there uh, maybe, and if, if we have a setup to do or whatever, then we will get there an hour before call time so that, you know, if, if it's a big stage, we'll start serving before, or we, we, we can, you know, take photos or textures while everybody else is at lunch, which usually, you know, they clear out the whole stage. So it's the, the you know, the best time for us to do all the, our photography because there's nobody in the way. Or, you know, we stay afterwards at night. But a typical day on set is usually, what, 15 hours, you know, 12 to 15. And then sometimes on a rough rough shoot, it's, it can go up to 18. So. so tell us now a little bit about your department. Who else is in your department and who do you report to? On set, it's usually the visual effects supervisor, which is, the you know, the, the, the main boss uh, of everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he will, he will be in direct contact with the director and he'll pretty much convey the director's, um, wishes to all of the artists. And, you know, he's, he's the one that oversees everybody. Um, then there's different departments. My department is the integration department, which covers the camera tracking and the onset uh, data gathering. Okay. Onset, it's the visual effects uh, supervisor, then there'll be uh, maybe some coordinators, you know, to help coordinate all the stuff. Uh, then there'll be me, which is a uh, integration lead. And then under me, I can have like, depending on how big the shoot is, I can have a couple PAs and a data wrangler. And the data wrangler will pretty much just take a camera notes, you know, all the heights, measurements, lenses, uh, all the stuff that's related to the information on the camera. So now how is it different when you are back at the office? So once, you know, we we're done with the shoot, I have about one terabyte of, the plot of photos that I need to go through. And I am the only person who knows what the hell I did. Right, right. <laughs> so I have to, you know what I mean? I have to spend typically a month or two gathering and collecting, you know, and, and sorting all of the data that I took in a cohesive form so that everybody else knows exactly where things are and know where to find things if they need them. So, you know, compiling all the photos, uh, building all these uh, uh, sets, uh, you know, putting them in the right slates, right, you know, this reference goes with this HDR, with this uh, uh, model. So, you know, just organizing pretty much all the data. And then once that is done, I can I can help the tracking department, uh, track cameras, which is, um, you know, a pretty monotonous job, but, uh, somebody's got to do it. (laughs) Right. It's it's pretty much, you have to, uh, track the, the camera on set, uh, and have the CG camera do the same thing as what the camera on set did. So let's say if if it was a dolly move, then the CG camera has to do the exact same dolly move. Mm -hmm. Um, so that the CG element looks like it's, there, you know what I mean? Right. So now when you're in the office, is there anybody else working with you or do you get to work on your own? Um, usually when, when I, when I have to organize all the data, it's on my own or whoever, you know, if it's, there's usually there's, you know, maybe if it's a big production, there's two units and there's two of us mm-hmm. doing the same stuff, just on two different units. And ah. we both work together to organize the data. Uh, but the, the tracking department is, is pretty big depending on how many shots we're working on. So wow. I could be up to, you know, 15, 20 people just on our department. Yeesh. Yeah. Now, do you, um, do you find that there are some things that are really hard to do that are difficult or is everything pretty much, you know, pretty easy, same kind of level of, of difficulty? I think it all depends on, uh, the shot and how how prepared we are, you know, like, let's say we, you know, we, we did this complicated handheld, like usually like handheld moves with zoom are really difficult to, to track afterwards because, you know, you don't know how fast they zoomed. You don't know how, what exactly what length the lens was at what point. So it's very subjective, you know what I mean? And we have Uh to technically mimic the same movement that the camera guy did on set in the computer. So the more movement, the more intricate the move of the camera is, mm-hmm. the harder it is for us to do our job in the computer. Do you have any input on a production? Well, for me, you know, usually that's the visual effects supervisor's job. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, it's, it's a hierarchy thing. Uh, you can suggest things like, hey, you know, this 
um, this wire is going to be really difficult to paint out or, or you know, they, they, it doesn't look right or, or some things are not looking right. Let's, can we ask the director if he can do it another way or, or you know, it's things that will make it look better or, or make it easier or not for okay. us to make it look realistic. You know what I mean? Okay. Or, or, you know, things like I worked on Ender's Game and, and the, you know, the, the kids had to wear harnesses underneath the suit. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you can, you can see the harness or, or the way the wire comes out of the suit. So it's like, you know, just helping the, the costume department. Hey, if you reroute the wire this way, maybe it won't, it won't pull the suit this way. And then we don't have to retouch it in CG, you know? Yeah. So the, the, the more we can do on set, the, the easier it is, obviously, you know, afterwards in the computer and the less work we have to do. And so the better we can make other things look. What do you find different in working on a location versus working on a set inside? On a studio is a lot easier. Obviously, everything's controlled. You know, there's no, um, everything's just in one space. You don't have to be running around. You know, there's obviously there's running around, but it's right. not a big space. Uh, you know, there's green screen usually for us. And it's, it's actually a lot more boring than when you're on set. Like okay. when you're on set, you have to, you're usually on a location that's like they picked it because it's beautiful or, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. landscape or whatever. And you have to run around, there's sand, there's sun, uh, long days, you know, it's, it's, Longer setups. It, it's. I, I'm guessing it's the same as as what production, you know, uh, regular production people would would feel like. I'm sure, like grip, find it easier to work on on a closed green screen set than on location where they have to carry. You know, if you're working at the beach, you have to carry all the equipment in the, the sand. sand you know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Not fun. A workout, but not fun. Yes. Now, with your job, do you interact with the cast, or are you strictly like? Oh, I, I have to interact with the cast uh, most of the time. It depends on um, on if we're doing like you know if if we're doing a, a, a CG character of that actor, mm-hmm. then we have to recreate him. So we have to take a lot of uh, uh, reference photos of him and the pictures, you know, textures, everything, so that we can recreate him exactly okay. uh, in CG. So the, the more CG work we do uh, using the actor, then obviously the more interaction I have, we have to do with them. Now, the fun part of your job is you get to travel a lot, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it depends on, you know, obviously uh, wherever the, the production goes, we go. So there's, there's a lot of travel. Does that affect your work? In any way, or is it the same old, same old? Like- uh, no, usually it's it's the same. You know, it's, it's just a little bit more work to pack things up. And uh, usually when you travel out of the country, you have to do a list of all your equipment. So whatever you bring into the country, you, you take out, you know. Right. Uh, but the work on set, is it's the same anywhere you go. <laughs> so now with, with all the traveling, do you find that it can affect your personal life or other parts of your life because you're in and out a lot? Um, it can, it just, you know, it d- disrupts, but, um, I don't have kids, you know, I don't, I, I'm not married. So it's, it's not like I'm leaving kids behind, you know, it's, right. it's, it's pretty much my own and my boyfriend can come and visit anytime he wants. So it, it, it works out. It's not, it's not as tough for me as it is for people that have families and kids because they have to, you know, they're, they're away from their families a lot. Right. So the, your bosses are okay with people coming and visiting you? Yeah, they're, you know, it's it's like I'm I'm in a hotel so we're whenever not not on set obviously, but it, you know. Right. My boyfriend can come and and, and visit and on the weekends or or whenever. Oh, well, see now that's nice. So now is it any different working on features as opposed to television or commercials? Um yes. Features usually have more time and money. Um, so okay. things are not as hectic commercials. Usually, you know, they're, they're, um, they're shorter periods, you know, it's a two, three day shoot and they pack in a lot of work. So it's usually a little bit more hectic, uh, on a commercial, but other than that, the work is, is, is the same. It's just a, a tighter schedule usually on commercials. Okay. Since the time you started out, how has the industry changed for your department specifically? 
Um, you know, the different uh, software gets developed, uh, new cameras come out. So it's, it's just a, a matter of adapting to the new technology. Um, other than that, the way, you know, the same information needs to be gathered. So it's just, right. you know, a different way of gathering the, the data. So, you know, now with the invention of the iPad, now it's easier to jot down all the notes instead of a paper and pad, you know. Um, right. Cameras are a little bit faster, so you can take your photos a little bit faster. Um, better lenses, so you, your your pictures are a little bit sharper, you know. Um, so it, it's cool because you get to play with a lot of toys and, and experiment and upgrade. Um, every year something new comes out, so we just have to learn new equipment every time it comes out and uh, try and use better equipment to make our job easier or better, you know. Right. Now that sounds like fun, though. Get to play with all the gadgets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Vicky, you've worked on a number of movies by David Fincher, who is famous for specifics on a film. Do you have any good Fincher stories to share with us? Um, I don't know. He's a very talented director who knows what he wants and knows how to do it. So it's it can be very, not difficult, but, uh, you know, when he knows it can be done, you can't say no, obviously. And right. you just have to say yes to everything because it is possible. It just takes a lot of work. And he's a very, um, David is very detail oriented and he, he knows exactly what, like he, he has this shot in his head and he wants it perfect. So okay. he will do as many takes as he has to to get it done, which, you know, he's pretty, everybody knows this, you know, we, on uh, right. Benjamin Button, I think we broke a hundred takes on, on us. And, you know, it was like one of the last takes of the day. And it was this one, it was this old lady and there was no dialogue. It was just a dolly push in and she just had to turn around and smile at the camera. And there, there was a oh. dog in the scene and it was, it was, so difficult because to coordinate the dolly move with the dog <laughs> and the lady was, oh my, it was, it was, it was pretty funny, you know, like they would get the camera right, but then the dog moved. So, okay, let's do it again. They would get the, you know, the dog was perfect. And then the camera was too slow or too fast. And the, the old lady was getting tired. So, you know, like Aww. she wasn't turning around fast enough or, or too slow or, you know, it was, but we got it, you know, a hundred plus takes later. <laughs> Wow, um, she's a trooper. The old lady's a trooper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you know, they, some people say it's excessive. Uh, but he make, in my opinion, he makes great films. So you know, his men, his work. <laughs> so if, <laughs> if you know what you want, um, then why not get it? You know what I mean? If if you know well, yeah. ex- exactly how it should look, you should strive to 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 get what you want and get it as perfect as he can. Especially if he has it in his head exactly how he wants it. Of course, his film, exactly. his way. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <you know. laughs> so now what would you, what would you um, suggest to people that after hearing you are interested in what you do? Oh, it's, that's a tough one, especially for me, because I was not looking to go into the effect and it just like landed in front of me, which was, you know, mm-hmm. like, it was just, being at the right place at the right time. But what I would say is like, as long as you're working hard, people will notice, you know what I mean? If I wasn't working hard, Mm -hmm. then uh, the guy who recruited me wouldn't have come up to me and say, Hey, you you seem like a good worker. You have a good work ethic. Hey, do you want to come, come to our company? You know, I have no experience in visual effects, but he saw something in me that I'm guessing he liked. So he gave me a chance. So I think it's like, don't slack because everybody's watching, especially on set. You, you right. want to put your best foot forward because everybody's watching. And there's so many people that even if you're just a PA, you know, you have to bust your butt and just do it. You know, it's one of the hardest jobs out there. Um, but you just do it, you know, and, and people notice that and people, you know, if, if they like somebody, then they will try and help you. So I think that's, that's the best advice I would give People, you know, uh, to start with okay. any any department you want to be at. Start at me. Obviously, everybody starts at the bottom. But if you work hard enough, people will notice and they'll 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 want to bring you up. You know, they're like, hey, 
if he right. works hard at this, he, you know, then you work hard at anything. And, and if, if you don't complain, you just do your job. People like that, you know, and, and people want those type of people around and they'll, they'll make right. things happen so that they can be around. It's a common theme here at Crew Call. <laughs> <laughs> are you listeners, listeners getting it? I hope you are by now. Just be a good person. Easy to deal with. No drama. We don't want drama. We just want you to work hard. Yeah. What is the best part of your job? To me, I think traveling. I, I like traveling. You know, I've been to various places of the world. I've been to Iceland, Mexico, um, you know, in the United States. I've been to plenty of states. Uh, I've been to London. Um, so I love to travel. And having somebody paid for me to travel is great. <laughs> it's so, the best, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Even though, you know... You go to places and usually you're not even, you're half asleep because you've been working 17 hours a day. Uh, you know, sometimes right. you have downtime and we're usually in one location for three to four months. So you, you get to live in a, in a different place. Uh, and it, it's cool. It's cool to, to be in a different culture for that long and um, working in a, you know, in a, in a film that people will, will watch afterwards and hopefully it turns out to be good (laughs) right now what would you say is the worst thing about your job if there is anything that's bad (laughs) um politics you know like everything else uh right there's politics and everything you know you you have to work through the channels and you have to bust your butt and then even if sometimes just because of politics things don't go your way or you know it but I think that's the film business. I think that in every department or actually everywhere, uh, right. You have yeah. to go through different, uh, you have to endure the politics of, of every business. So I think that's, that's the bad thing about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there anything that you would do differently? If you can, if you had control over the situation in your field, is there anything that you would change or do differently to make it, make it easier or better? I don't know. I think I've, I've had good teachers and I think they do good work. I think the company that I work for, uh, does great work. And I'm, I don't think I have the right to change anything. You know what I mean? Like I'm still learning. I, this is every, every, every day I learn something new and, and I never, never look at myself as wanting to, uh, you know, like I guess there's, there's ideas to better little things here and there, but, it's all about learning and, and sucking up different people's ideas and then working with those ideas in a different way to, um, I guess, make it more efficient for you. But mm-hmm. I don't know if, if I change anything. Well, I have one. How about a wellness day for the crew so you can get massages and a spa day? That would be my thing I would change. That, <laughs> that would be awesome. And you know what? Actually, that has happened. Really? Yeah, they, they uh, you know, when there's a awesome producer on set, uh, they 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 know that the crew has been working hard. They bring in some uh, some masseuses, and uh, we've actually had some before, which is cool. Nice. So it's it's crazy how little things can make a crew so much happier. Well, of course. I mean, who doesn't like a massage exactly. after you've been working for seventeen hours? Come yeah. on. Okay, so. A lot of visual effects companies are having financial difficulties and even going out of business. Why do you think that is? Uh, there's different factors, but I think the the main reason is uh, it's cheaper labor and the tax incentives and the fact that there's you know, five major studios and they pretty much control the work, you know, and the way things work in, in visual effects is, let's say, I don't know, a, a big studio company, Universal or, or, or Warner Brothers or, you know, all the one of the big studios has a movie. Okay. Then, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's hundreds of small VFX houses competing to work on that movie. So now you have to bid. It's like, okay, I can do the effects for $20 million. Then the other house is like, well, I can do it for 19. Then the other house is like, well, I can do it for 18. So you're lowering your price 
so that you can mm. get work. You know what I mean? And the, right. the studios pretty much take advantage of this because they're like, well, we have the work. Do you want it or not? If you don't want it, we'll go to this person. You know what I mean? And and that that gets very competitive. And so you, you're different companies are fighting each other just to cut down prices and uh, get the work, just to get the work. Because if you don't have work, you're losing money on a VFX company. You know, so as long as you're, you're, right. you're doing work, you're at least staying afloat. So that's, that's pretty much the goal. And if, if you're bidding against other companies, then all you're doing is just under valuing your own. And I think that's one of the yeah. main, main, main reasons that, you know, companies are going uh, under and then these companies, these uh, big studios are chasing tax incentives. And a lot of uh, countries, Vancouver, they're offering, you know, they're telling the students, Hey, if you bring all the work to Vancouver, then we'll give you 30% of, of that money back or, or they'll cut, you know, 30% of the cost off. And so the students uh-huh. are like, well, if, if, if I'm saving you know, $30 million, then yeah, let's go up to Vancouver. But at that point, the VFX house has to build a facility in Vancouver to cater to this studio. And all that cost comes down on the visual effects house, which then obviously then, you know, now you're, you're covering that cost plus doing all the work, then you know, you can get into debt really easy that way. <laughs> and a yeah. lot of companies have. So I personally don't know how to fix it. I know there's tons of, you know, a movement starting um, to try and, you know, get these tax cut or, 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 you know, have some of this money come to the VFX house or, or have, you know, some of this um because the VFX house doesn't get residuals, you know, like, like if, right, the, right. if the movie makes zero, if the movie makes $500 million, the VFX house gets the same payment, you know, how much ever you said it right. would cost, that's exactly how much it, we're going to give you. And so, right. you know, some people are trying to get uh, them to residuals. If, you know, if they did the good work, then they should get some residuals. So, it's, it's, right. There's a lot of politics in there that you know I'm 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 not an expert on, and this is just a little bit of what I know. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff happening back in behind the scenes, you know, that people are working right. on trying to keep jobs here in LA, um, trying to you know uh, uh, have companies respect the work we do and pay more money, you know. Yeah. Well, Vicky, thank you so much for taking some time out to um, talk with us and for our listeners, because yours is a very interesting job. Um, Seems like a lot of fun because you get to do a lot of different things and play with a lot of gadgets. But thank you so much for spending a good quality of time with us. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. And thank you for listening. Yay. Cut. We're done. Woohoo. for crew call if you'd like to support the podcast remember to click the amazon link on the tap of website before you go shopping it doesn't cost you anything and amazon gives us a little kickback everyone wins and if you like what you've heard please consider leaving us a review on itunes good or bad we really appreciate the feedback thanks again to vicky for telling us how the visual effects department works during production tune in next time for production supervisor kelly sims 